reason to see somebody fall than I do. There are people, I ain't gonna lie, if I see them fall, I say, oh, I get that dirty. Come on, they're like, well, you know, you know. <laughs> I so, still pray for them, though. I really do. <laughs> well, and, and, and we get into that thing, too. You know, like I told mom one time, she told me, she said, we got to pray for these people, Marty. She said, you got to pray for them. I said, I, I do. I said, and David over in the book of Psalms said, Lord, strike them down. Look out their eyes. Turn their houses down. That's what he did. <laughs> so, so I guess that's what David prayed. I'm going to give him a thought of money. You ain't helping me, Marty. You're going to quit that. I'm going young and old. <laughs> <laughs> so... So that's, that's one way to pray. But this is David. He has every reason in the world. And chapter 1 of 2 Samuel is a eulogy for King Saul. Now, let me tell you a little story. There was a man in a community who died and uh, the family members came to the pastor their pastor and said, uh, you know our brother who died, uh, you, you know he was a very, very terrible person. He was just a bad man. He was a drunk. He used drugs. He cheated on his wife. He beat his kids. He stole from his neighbors. Everybody knows this guy was just a terrible, terrible guy. Said that there's just some way of preaching that during the funeral that you could just say that our brother was a saint. Say, we'll give you a thousand dollars. Go ahead, preach up here to one. So the preacher went home and prayed about it. He said, I just can't, you know, I can't lie. He said, I, I, there's no way I can find a pulpit and tell the story like that. So the funeral came, the preacher gets up behind the pulpit and he said, We're here today for Brother So and So. He said, uh, um, Is it off against God? I don't know, is it? Oh. I can't look at it while we're doing such a Somebody just blew up something. Yeah. Anyway. I see him walking. So the preacher goes to the to the um uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. preacher goes up to the pulpit and he said, We're here today for brother so and so. He said, All y'all knew him. All y'all knew he was a bad person. Everybody in this room knows that he he he, he drank heavily. He used drugs. Everybody knows that he beat his wife or cheated on his wife and beat his kids. Everybody in here knows that he stole from most of you in here. Everybody in here knows that he is a terrible person. But you know what? I guess compared to his brother, somebody called him saying. <laughs> Are you guys? I am not. not. <laughs> That's what I know. <laughs> that, I, I've always Again, said. you got it, girl. <laughs> I've always, I've always heard it said that when you preach a funeral, and I've only got to speak to a couple of funerals, I've sang it quite a few, but I've only spoken to a couple, but something that also uh, a, a very wise man told me, don't ever try to preach anybody in there. They have already preached their funeral before they die. It is not your job to get that person into heaven or hell from the pulpit. It's your job to talk to the family. That's it, amen. And so Saul is dead, and we'll get into that a little bit. In the last chapter of 1 Samuel, Saul has died. Uh, they're in a battle with the Amalekites. Uh, they start being taken out. If you remember from our last lessons, uh, Samuel told Saul that you and your sons are all going to die, uh, that you're not going to make this. And they went out and they fought, and Saul was injured. And he begged somebody to kill him. They went and he took his sword and he laid on his sword and died. Um, and, and we'll kind of get into that here in a minute. So he killed himself to keep the Amalekites from being able to torture him and use him as a trophy and all this stuff. So uh, Saul is dead. David doesn't know anything about this. David and his guys are, are still, remember, they just came from Ziklag and all that. And they're still in this place. And this is pretty much where we're getting into now. Uh, David and his guys are here, and we are going into 2 Samuel chapter 1. And the first person, the eulogy for enemies, that was kind of a lesson. Interesting, interesting. What do you 
say about your enemy, what do you say about those that you don't like or that don't like you? Interesting. First, we see the messenger of death. All right? Uh, we're going to be in 2 Samuel 1. Let's read the first four verses. This kind of sets the stage. Now, it came to pass after the death of Saul, when David would return from the slaughter of the Amalekites, and David had abode two days in Ziklag. Now, remember, the, the Amalekites had came in and took all their people. Remember that? They come in that other week, the, one of the other lessons that came in. David and his guys were out to fight with the Philistines, the Israelites, whatever they were going to fight. Now, uh, David and comes back, and the Amalekites have snuck in, took all their women, their children, all their stuff, and left. Mm -hmm. All the people talked about stoning David, said he encouraged himself in the Lord. And then David and them went back and whipped the Amalekites and came back with all their stuff. They got everything back. So this is where they're at. And David was turned from the slaughter of the Amalekites. And David had a boat two days. He ain't going to be back two days now. All right? And it came even to pass on the third day that, behold, a man came out of the tent from Saul with his clothes rent and earth upon his head. And so it was when he came to David, they fell to the earth and did obeisance. Now, in those days, it was common term that when you were in mourning, you would rent your clothes and you would throw dirt on your head. And I don't think some of our ideas are stupid because they had some worse than us. But they would rent their clothes, they would throw dirt on their head. This is what they did. I mean, you see it off in the Bible. Uh, when David was, you remember when David, uh, God was talking about taking the child of David, they would rent his clothes, he'd do ashes on his head, they would do that stuff. This, this is how people would. So this guy is coming out of the camp of Saul. Saul and his sons are dead. He shows up at David's place. He's got his clothes ripped, he's got dirt on his head, and he goes down and he falls on the earth before David and does obesity. Okay? Trying to keep you get picture here. And David said unto him, From which comest thou? And he said unto him, Out of the camp of Israel am I escaped. In other words, he said, I, I was with Saul, but I got out. I, I, I was saved. I escaped out of there. David said unto him, How did the matter? How did the battle go? I pray you tell me, he answered, that the people are fled from the battle, and many of the people also are fallen and dead, and Saul and Jonathan, his son, are dead also. Now this is going to have some mixed emotions, because David, I, I don't care how spiritual you are, David had to go, <clears throat> Saul's dead. I quit running. So not only was Saul dead, his best friend in the world was dead too. So this is the news that this guy comes and tells him. And the, the funny thing is, this, this guy, we, we learn later on that this guy is an Amalekite. Remember David just went killed. Amalekites. If you're going to play a part in this discipline, you, you got the Amalekites who David and him was fighting. And this guy is one of their people, but he's come out of it's all out of whack. I'm sitting here thinking it'd be like a World War II, and we don't know who's on whose side and who's fighting what. What, what people? We don't know. But this guy's pretending to be something that he's not. And I'm sure everybody in that area knew that Samuel had anointed David King. We've seen that all through there as we went through the lesson. And that he was supposed to take the place of Saul. So if I'm an Amalekite, and we just got killed and just got our butts wolf. I know my life's on the line. I'm going to come in, and I, if I'm going to make anybody happy, I'm going to make the head guy happy. I'm going to come in here, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to bring crown, and I'm going to bring bracelet, and I'm going to bring everything to David, and I'm in. I'm in good with the big dog. That's going to kind of protect me. I'll be straight. Because I'm sure... David is going to just be ecstatically happy because Saul is dead. I, he, he's going to be just beside himself, and who's going to be the bearer of good news? It's me. See, he's not thinking it's bad news. He's thinking it's good news. Hey, David, you can be king now, brother. Only one in front of you is gone. And so he comes in and does obeisance. In other words, he's saying, I'm with you. I'm on your side. I'm following you now. 
see where this story is getting to. All right. Now here's the message. The message is there. Five through eight. Still the same scripture. David said to the young man that told him, How knowest thou that Saul and Jonathan his son? How do you know? The young man that told him said, As I happened by chance upon Mount Gilboa, behold, Saul leaned upon his spear. So obviously he was there. Because he knew Saul had laid on his spear. And lo, the chariots and horsemen followed hard after him. And when he looked behind him, he saw me, and he called unto me, and I answered, Here am I. <coughs> so, now, let me say this. It's according to who you talk to, what preacher you talk to, what uh, scholar you listen to. I'm not real sure which way I lean on this shit. Uh, I know good good men on both sides of the aisle of this. Some people say that this really happened, that the guy did come and Saul told him, uh, you know, please kill me, blah, blah, blah. Some people say that it's just a, a fabricated story that he made up to make himself look good for David. Uh, I don't know which side of that it is. I don't know if Saul was dead when he got there or if he actually killed Saul. I, I don't know that. But either way, let's, let's keep going. And he said unto me, Who art thou? And I answered him, I am a Right? Can you please slide over off that squeaking floor? Yes, please. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> <Mercy>. <laughs> Not 
the slave of man and woman, infant and suckling, ox and sheep, camel and ass. He said, I don't want nothing left. It's what God told Saul to do to the Amalekites. He said, I want you to go in and I want you to utterly destroy them so that there's nothing left. Nothing. <coughs> he said, I don't even want, and, and we didn't watch the movies today, they would say, can't be no witnesses. <laughs> don't leave a witness. Right. Make sure, don't let nobody get away, kill them all. Now this is God's instructions to Saul. And on the day that Saul dies, He's laying on his spear, and this guy comes up, and Saul says, who are you? He says, I am an Amalekite. The thing that God told you to deal with way back here that you didn't deal with is going to come back over here and bite you in the book. Understand that. You better deal with whatever it is that God is telling you to deal with over here because if you don't deal with it when God tells you to deal with it, then what you didn't deal with is going to come back and bite you. Mm -hmm. And so Saul is here in this Amalekite is, is said, I'm an Amalekite. And, and if Saul is alive, I, I don't know which way I'm in. I still don't know which way. But if this is true, and if this man has come in and, and Saul's on a spear, he's dying, and he ain't quite dead, and he tells this guy, will you please kill me? Who are you? And he says, I'm an Amalekite. I can't help but think that Saul was sitting there going, really? I wish I took care of that on my will. I wish I had dealt with that way back in 1 Samuel 15. Amen. When God told me to deal with it. Mm -hmm. Now, guess who's going to get to take my life? Mm -hmm. The one I was supposed to take care of. God was giving me, and here's the thing. God was giving me the victory over here. Right. He done told me, go on over there. You're going to whip them all, kill them all. God done told me, I get victory here, but guess what? I didn't do what God said, so guess what? They're going to get victory over here. Mm. Come on now. The message of today. Again, David has every right in the world to hate Every right. He's got every right to hate those people who, who have, the man who's, who's went after his life, who's destroyed his life, who's took everything from him, who's had him on the run all these years. He's got every opportunity to, to, to hate him. Verses 11 and 12. The morning over death. Then David took hold of his clothes. Now, again, what were we doing this April? Somebody told us, Whoa! <laughs> we're going to have a party. We ain't going to go pizza. We're going to go, yeah, we're going to do something. We're going to, we're going to order some pizzas and we're going to have some Mountain Dew. I don't know if that's a sweet tea. We're going to have some sweet tea and some pizza and we're going to get all together and watch Walking Dead. No, we ain't going to do that. But we, we're going to have a good time again. We're going to celebrate finally this sucker who's been giving us all these problems is gone. Thank you, Lord. He's done. He's out of the way. And you know what we say? Then David took hold of his clothes and went to him. Likewise, all the men that were with him. Remember, David's the example. And David said, This was the king. Did I always agree with him? Nope. Did he like me very much? Nope. But you know what?
We can't let our feelings always get in our way. And this was David, and David said, our king is dead. And he didn't celebrate. He ripped his clothes just like the, the guy did that came to him. David's enemy had fallen, but he did not celebrate. Why? David has a son whose name is Saul. The Bible tells us that Solomon was probably the wisest man in the Bible, right? That's, that's what we've, we've always been heard, heard, told, whatever. He had an opportunity for all the riches of wisdom. He asked for wisdom, and he got all the riches. This is what Solomon said. Proverbs 24. Oh, was it? Oh, let's read verses first. Let me read. And they mourned and wept and fasted until evening for Solomon, for Jonathan, his son, for the people of the Lord, for the house of Israel, because they were fallen by the sword. So they're, they're upset that not just Saul, but Jonathan, and all the people of Israel died. Yet these, these guys have been coming after them to kill them. They've got every right to be happy that they're dead. So why are they not celebrating? This is what Solomon says. Proverbs 24, 17. Rejoice not when thine enemy falleth, and let not thy heart be glad when he stumbleth. Right. You want an answer for your enemy? You want an answer for those people that you want to see fall? You want an answer for those people that you like and laugh when they, when they mess up? Put this verse in front of you back. Mm -hmm. Rejoice not when thy enemy falleth. And let not my heart be glad when he stumbles. And I'm, gonna, I'm not going to add to the scripture, but I'm going to say this after this is Martin 101. Because <laughs> it might be you tomorrow. Yeah, you're right. It might be you tomorrow. And guess what? All the people that don't like you and all the people talk about you, they're going to have a celebration tomorrow when you fall. Let's do it. Hey, Wayne, he sure was laughing at us for stumbling a while ago, wasn't he? Oh, that was a twin. I'll quit. <laughs> Both of them got hurt feet. Both of them quit. <laughs> that should be our response. And I wrote this because I want to get this. This is hard to say. It's hard for me too. I try to love everybody. I, my, my boss man, we've got this little thing. We're going. He wants me to put it on a plaque, put it over the door, and says. Jesus loves you, and I'm trying to do hard. <laughs> That's it. And they make a T-shirt on that one. <laughs> yeah. But I, I, I try to love it. But there's just some people I don't like down there. Just yeah. straight up. Truth. There's some preachers I don't like. Come on. There, there's some preachers that I just don't like to listen to. I don't like to deal with. I got no use for their what they what they say. I I, I don't care. All right. And if, 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 they, if their church closed tomorrow, I'd probably be the first one to say, well, they probably deserve it. Mm -hmm. yep. that, that'll be me. Rejoice not when that enemy falls. And that, let not that part be glad that he stumbles. There's some preachers I'd like to see fall. That's Mark. But that's not what God told us. Right. And I wrote, that should be our response when God's anointed has fallen. It's not, yes, the Lord is going to rejoice. Because guess what? These people out there are going to point out where you're going to. Exactly. I, I, I said before, we, we, we love to get these denominational arguments. We love, even within the Baptist, we keep all these different arguments over all these different stupid things. And, and I keep trying to tell everybody, we all when we all shook up when we get to heaven find out we all were on somewhere. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. Every one of us. And we say, Well, you wrong about that. And God can say, Well, you're wrong about this. Exactly. I said, Oh, sorry, Lord. Yeah. Let me start saying I'm sorry. Now why? Amen. That way I ain't got to worry about it when I get there. Amen. So let's not be putting down other preachers and putting down other, other ministers and, and other people just because they don't think the way we think or believe the way we believe or, or preach the way we preach. Or, so, listen, some, some people don't even like preachers. Oh, the preacher likes this. The Bible says in Genesis chapter 1, the first day, that God created the heavens and the earth and the earth and the earth and the earth and the I, I, I say this with all honesty. We went to a revival in, in, in Gaston, Brother Zach Hughes' church. And Trey 
Now, he was with us. You and Tanya and Preacher David was with us. And we went in, and this fellow got up, and that's how he started preaching. Mm. But it, it was worse. Here's how he preached. The Bible says in Genesis, Now that's, that's exactly, that, I, I said, oh Lord, we in trouble up in here. And within three minutes of that man's message, every single one of us was on the edge of our seat like this. And never missed a note. That man preached one of the greatest messages I've ever preached. And preached David the same thing. One of the greatest, he went from Genesis all the way through to Revelation and preached on worship and what worship, and made it flat, tore it up. That man is a friend on Tammy's Facebook now. Love to hear that man. That's how he preaches. Right. Let's don't judge other people because of what they do or because of the way we like them. Let's just know that they're God's anointed and we pray for them. And if they fall, we don't yeah. rejoice in it. We say, oh, Lord, Come he's on. touching. That's good. I grew up with 
hello. <laughs> means one thing, sneaky means another. But you don't know which way it's coming from. I don't mind fighting somebody when they come at me and head home, preacher. Yeah, I'm good with that. But I don't know which way it's coming from. I'm going to leave you. Hey, that's why you always got to be on your toes watching everything. Yes, around. sir. <laughs> so he, he said, <coughs> Therefore it shall be when the Lord thy God hath given thee rest from all thy enemies round about, in the land which the Lord thy God gives thee, for an inheritance to possess it, that thou shalt blot out the remembrance of Amalek from under the heaven. Thou shalt not forget it. Uh, so most of you say, now when y'all get over there and you get settled in, you get your land, and you get everything done, I want you to wipe out the Amalekites. And don't forget it. <coughs> Many, many times God tells you in the Bible, don't forget But he told the children of Israel, he said, when you get there, you get settled there, don't forget this. Do what I told you to do. And so the, the opportunity arises, and God tells Saul, who is the king, all right, remember what I told you about Deuteronomy? Now's the day. Go kill them. Go wipe them out. Every single one of them. Don't leave anybody to talk about it. And in just our lesson, how many times have we seen the name of Malachi? You better deal with whatever God's telling you to deal with over here. Mm, yes, sir. Good. And it ain't got nothing to do with April. It ain't got nothing to do with Teresa or with Ann or with James. It's got to do with me dealing with my problem right here that God has told me to deal with before I get over here or it's going to come back to you. Y'all remember I told this story. Good friend. Actually, was preaching a sermon, and he had me bring him this big old stump. I mean, it was a stump. It took a couple of us, brought him in, we said, I don't remember this thing. Never forget it. Never forget this thing. He said he'd been on vacation, he came back from vacation, and this tree had fallen in his yard. He said, now most people would go out there with a chainsaw, wink, 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 and the fire was go. He said, I'm just curious, man. He said, I wonder why they He said, I think the storm comes, did it just rot? I mean, what, what's the deal with it? You know. He said, so I go out there and I look, and it don't have any burn places, so I can obviously have to struck it. You know, maybe the wind just blew it down, maybe the, the, the ground had got so much water in it that it couldn't hold it or what. He said, I'm just trying to find out what's going on. He said, the roots were still in, the, the tree was just broke off. He said, so I went there with my chainsaw and I started cutting this tree up because I want to find out why my tree fell. He said, and, and I, I can show you up here, he said, I'm pretty good with trees. He said, but sometime many years ago, this tree sustained a wound. Don't know what it was, but something injured this tree. He said, now I had a tree expert been around back then in those days, a tree expert probably could have come in, took care of the tree, and it would have healed up great. Uh, he said, but nobody really dealt with it because it was just a tree. And so what happened was, if anybody's ever put a basketball rim on a tree, some of you, y'all remember the metal, the metal rims, yeah. you put it on there? Well, in just a few years, it grows around the metal rims. You can't get it back out. But what happened was, this tree began to just grow around this wound, and it just continued to grow. He said, it was a beautiful tree. He said, I love this tree. We used to go sit in the shade in my yard under this tree. I love this tree. He said, but one day, a storm came. And when the wind started blowing really, really hard against this tree, that wound that was way down in that tree, that mm, had never on. been dealt with, mm, that's good. showed its ugly face. Yeah, come on. That's I good. Stand in that. mm. So I tell you, whatever that is that you need to deal with, come on now. don't wait to deal with it. Deal with it before you get over here. Because if you get over here and you ain't dealt with it, Come on. it may get the victory over you. Yeah, mm. that's good stuff, mm. brother. Preach that. Told you a hard lesson, buddy. That's good stuff. <laughs> <laughs> David's been rough on us, ain't he? <laughs> <laughs> so, we get into the memory of Saul and Jonathan. And, and I want to read these verses to you real quick. We're going to read. Starting with uh, verse 17, we're still saying Samuel 1. And this is actually something 
guess I'll kind of go through that here in a minute. Uh, let's read this. And David lamented with this lamentation over Saul and over Jonathan and his son. Also he bade them teach the children of Judah the use of the bow. Behold, it is written in the book of Joshua. Now, let, let me tell you this real quick before I go into this. This is actually used in a lot of funerals. This is used in, in a, a lot of funerals. Not necessarily maybe not in our circles. We, we kind of country and we don't you know, we, we kind of use the same one, but th this is a very popular, it's called the eulogy. And, and, let's, let's read. and think about that as we're going through it. The beauty of Israel slain upon thy high places, how are the mighty fallen? Tell it not in Gath, post it not in the streets of Ascalon, lest the daughters of the Philistines rejoice, lest the daughters of the uncircumcised triumph. Ye mountains of Geboah, let there be no dew, let there be no rain upon you, nor fields of offerings, for there is for there the shield of the mighty is finally cast away. The shield of Saul, as though he had not been anointed with oil. From the blood of the slain, from the fat of the mighty, the bow of Jonathan turned not back, and the sword of Saul returns not empty. Saul and Jonathan were lovely and pleasant in their lives, and in their death they were not divided. They were swifter than eagles, they were stronger than lions. Ye daughters of Israel, weep over Saul. Who clothed you in scarlet with other delights? Who put on ornaments of gold upon your apparel? How are the mighty fallen in the midst of battle? Old Jonathan, thou was slain in thy high places. I am distressed for thee, my brother Jonathan. Very pleasant hast thou been in thee. Thy love to me was wonderful, passing the love of women. And let me tell you this, that is not talking about homosexuality. This is an argument that a lot of people like to bring up and say David and Jonathan are homosexuals because he said he surpassed women. If you ever had a brother that was close enough to you, you'd know exactly what he was talking about. Being in the military, there were people, and I never served in war, I went in there long enough to serve in war. But those guys that I went through basic training with, I'd have beat the fool out of you over them guys. My drill sergeant, when I went in, that joker was mean as a rattlesnake. Understand me. He was six foot five, black as an ace of spades, and loud as a bullhorn. And he would come in there in the morning with them trash can leaders and wake you up, scare the fool out of him. But when we had family day, and my family came up for graduation, guess who the first person I wanted my daddy to meet was? My drill sergeant. There is a kinship with people that's closer than a brother. How are the mighty fallen and weapons of war perish? Real quick, I want to give you this. This is a poem that a lot of people use. They take this, these verses out and they use them, and it's called the Song of the Bow. You can Google it on Google and pull up the Song of the Bow, and this is what it's going to bring up. It's going to bring up these verses. And let me give you some, some things real quick out of it that, that I want you to get. The first thing that's in there is called the Requiem. The Requiem. First thing David shows is sadness at the news of God's anointing. First thing he says Oh my gosh, this is terrible, y'all. This is not something that we rejoice over. Do we rejoice that people go to heaven? Absolutely. But I do not rejoice that somebody else has fallen. That is not what I do. No matter who he was, no matter what church he went to, no matter how many people he made mad, no matter how many churches he split, he was still God's anointed, and I am to lament the fact that he has fallen. The next thing was the regret. And David said, I regret, I regret that God's enemies have apparently won a victory. Why? Because this is going to motivate them to come even further in. And, and so he, he's kind of warning people, you know what? That man's fallen. Satan is going to feel like he's got a victory over that, so he's going to come twice as hard against this man. He said, I hate this has happened because now the enemies think they've got an edge on us. Then you have the repetition. And I, I say this, but I want you to have, hold on to this because I'm going to bring a point at the end then. <coughs> David repeated Saul's accomplishments. He, he talked about some of the great things that Saul did. Remember Saul 
about to kill me. You see the relationship. He brought up the relationship of Saul and his son, and how close they were, that they fought together, they lived together, and then they died together. He talks about that he was a family man. He loved his kid. You see the remorse. If you remember back earlier in the story, these women would come out and sing, Saul has slain his thousands, and David his ten thousands. Y'all remember that? Now David says, I don't need to sing mournful for our king. He asked those same women to sing of Saul's greatness. He said, don't, don't lie about him, Lucy. Don't, do <coughs> don't, don't put the man down. Lift him up. Then David told him his relationship with God. How he missed his loved his friend. And his heart had to be breaking. I don't know if you've ever lost a good friend before. I lost one in high school that I, I can say was a really, really, really good friend. Driving on a motorcycle is the reason I don't ride a motorcycle today. Came down 95 out of Washington, D.C. Truck called the mattresses. Screen broke. Mattress blew off. Back from the motorcycle knocked him out. Yeah. And I always go back to my first days in school. In high school, we had moved to Tennessee. PE class. I go into gym eight or go into the locker room. I got a locker that don't have a locker or anything on it. Open it up, put my stuff in. The next thing I know, I'm getting lifted about that high off the ground. Ready to hit a guy, they call him Tank. He was a senior, I was a sophomore. He had jerked me up over the line and hit locker. You know what happens to us when we get bigger? <laughs> but I've been in PE for a couple days now, and me and this guy had really began to be friends. You and cut me with him. And I'll never forget if you said, hey, they can go away. He's all right. Tank said, you know him? He said, yeah, man, he's cool, man. Let him go. That's the last time I heard him. I forced it up. I looked up to him. He was somebody I looked up to in school. When he died, it hurt. These guys have been through ten times more than I have. And so I know David's heart had to be breaking. But you'll notice there are two things missing. First of all, there is no mention of Saul's faults. Again, that is not a place for a preacher to get in a pulpit at a man's funeral and talk about how bad he was. That's not your place. And that's not your place to sit and tell somebody else about how bad a man of God was. Just keep your mouth shut. If you got nothing good to say, just shut up and walk off. But you'll also notice that he didn't talk about Saul's goodness or piety either. Don't try to preach somebody good that ain't good. Let them preach their own sermon. Let them preach their own funeral. You deal with the other people. So David didn't lie and say, oh, he was such a good man. Because he wasn't. Because he was still God's man. Lastly, a few applications. <coughs> two applications out of this whole lesson. First one. We must commit ourselves to be faithful to God's wisdom. <coughs> Guess what? I love preacher David today. Is there some things that he says that I disagree with? Okay. I'm human. He's human. That's, 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 that's life. Guess what? He's still my pastor. He's still my pastor. I, nobody come to my house this morning, handcuffed me, put me in a car, Brought me up here, threw me in here, and told me I couldn't leave that I had listened to him. I had a choice when I came in here. And if I have chosen to come in here as him as my pastor, it is my responsibility to be faithful to my pastor. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. As best of my ability. Secondly, we must commit ourselves to follow God's wisdom. So remember this. David was chosen to be king many years before he was ever free. Many years. David went through a lot of stuff before he got to where God was taking him to. We can't rush things. 
God wants to take us, we got to deal with this. Got to. Not next week, not next month, not next year, not next time the Lord lays it on my heart. I've got to do this now. Because that's when you can make the change. Because guess what? We will have some good services. And I'm going to be on a high. And I'm going to feel like I'm on some kind of crazy drug preaching. Up in here. I, I mean, the Lord is moving, the Spirit's moving, and everything's going on. And man, I am just wound up, tight as a tick, and happy as I can be as a, as a hog eating bumblebees. I'm just, I'm just happy. Right. And all of a sudden,